So today has a real feeling of deja vu to it. So it was only a couple of weeks ago when we were getting the mixer set up, getting scaffolding set up indoors to try and pour this concrete ring beam. We were gonna try and get it all done in one day, but we were far too optimistic. We only got a quarter of it done, but that is not gonna be the case this week. This week, we are getting it finished by hook or by crook, although it's definitely a bit trickier this time because we're gonna be tackling the gables and pouring concrete on a just under 30 degree slope. What could possibly go wrong? Just removing some of the bracing that we had along the top of the form. There was a few comments when we put this bracing up of people saying, you're going overboard with the bracing, you don't need to put that much on. That might be the case, you might be right. But the last time we poured concrete in a form was when we did the base for the greenhouse and we thought we'd put adequate bracing in for that and that ended up bulging. So for the greenhouse it doesn't really matter because you can't even really see it when the greenhouse is on and it's only a small thing, it's not taking lots of weight. This is a very different story. This is for a building with a big heavy roof on. We have to put stone in front of it and build it in and I just wanna make sure it's right and straight. So maybe we have gone overboard, but better to be safe than sorry. But one thing I did find when we were pouring the concrete on the front last time was that we had so many of these top braces on, it was kind of getting in the way when I was smoothing and trying to work the concrete within the form. So we're taking off every other one and I don't think that's gonna be a problem. Like for example, where I've taken this one off, six inches to the left, there's a rod going through where I'll take the next one off. There's bracing against the wall. So I think we'll be absolutely fine. And hopefully it means we can whisk through it a bit quicker. <laughs> As well as removing some of the buttons, we're also going to make the concrete mix a little bit wetter because it makes it easier to work when it's poured. It's like the James Bond thing, isn't it? Just a quick one to add, because we had a few comments before from people saying, why are we having the generator inside? Put it outside. Any other time of the year, that's exactly what we would do. But look how dry this ground is. We don't have any type of hard standing around this building. So at this time of year when wildfires are so prevalent, it just makes more sense for us to have it in there. We've got no roof, so any fumes are being rushed out the door, rushed out through the ceilingless building. So that seems to us much safer. Although it is a bit annoying on the ears, but it is what it is. taking a quick breather in the shade. We're about probably three quarters of the way through now getting the back wall done. That's kind of just our goal for today. So we've probably got about another, what, hour, hour and a half? Yeah, hour and a half to two hours, I think. Okay, <laughs> hour and a half to two hours, Victoria estimates until we get that done. Okay, we're done for the day. The back is finished. It's dried out kind of enough to the touch now that I can put this over it without it damaging the top. So tucking her in for the night and then gonna go rest up because tomorrow is gonna be another day, another long day. And we are gonna try pace ourselves. I think tomorrow we're gonna try and do one of the gables the day after the next gable. See you bright and early tomorrow morning. It's day two, and today is the big day that we tackle the slopes. Feeling a tad nervous. 
So because the mix we did yesterday, a much wetter mix was so much easier to work with, we are gonna do that on the slopes as well. Normally if you pour concrete on a slope, they say the concrete you use should have a low slump number, which slump is kind of when you pour concrete into a cone, which they have for testing, then you remove the cone, how much it dips by after you've removed the cone. So the theory is that then when you pour on a slope, you use one that's much drier because it will hold its shape. But we found when we were doing the front, it's just really hard to work that dry mix in with the tools and the experience we have. It makes more sense for us to do it wet, but the way we're set up at the moment with just battens on the top, holding the form and it being open, probably not gonna work with a wet mix. So we've got an idea. So meet our friend OSB. So the plan is, that we will leave the battens there for now and we'll remove a batten as we're working up the slope and pouring the concrete. What we're then gonna do is cut some of this OSB down to size and effectively block in the top. Ready for another day of hard graft? I'm ready, ready and steady. We are promised a cloudier day today, but at the moment they're all pretty wispy, so we'll see if they materialize or not. Also, a little side note. If you didn't know already, cement wrecks clothes so we're wearing the same sweaty suntan lotion covered stinky clothes that we were wearing yesterday but with that being said if you think my t-shirt is bad check out the color of this one that shirt is meant to be blue gray blue blue, blue yeah I don't know if you can see this on camera look at the color of this oh. Look at the colour of this as well. Mystery bru bruise from Oof. yesterday. <laughs> Doesn't hurt at all. I've got no idea how it happened. So hopefully you can hear me clearly enough over the generator. So we've probably poured maybe a couple of feet of concrete and it's going in nice enough, but when we are vibrating it, it's moving down with gravity so quickly and I'm not gonna be able to get it to a point to smooth it off over the top because it moves at such a rate now, it just wants to overspill on the bottom. I'm just gonna cut some OSB and start blocking this up. And then once it's blocked up, I can start vibrating it even more and it will just naturally fill. And the finish we get will be the finish of where it's compressed against the OSB. It doesn't need to be perfect. It purely needs to be functional. Success. The capping it off at the top has worked. We've now put one on, vibrated it, and I can now see it's backed all the way up to where it's uncovered. So now I'll start filling up the next bit and then get another bit of OSB on, rinse and repeat. It's only tried to squeeze out of a couple of tiny areas, mostly at the bottom. Very good news. Victoria's just come back down from getting the dogs. Tell me, is this not the poshest thing you've ever seen on a building site? The poshest? Not you, the drinks. <laughs> oh, how rude. Iced coffee. Iced coffee, nice. Coffee on caffeine is a terrifying thought. <laughs> So peaceful. We're the ones making the racket. Yeah. We 
are so close. Just getting the last little bit in. I don't think you can see it on the camera angle. Hang on, let me turn it. Can you see there? Oh, the shadow's in the way from the camera, but just getting the last little bit in the sides and then sort of smooth off the top and then done for the day. Feeling fresh? <laughs> what is this? It's my microphone. Okay, well, I'm feeling pretty exhausted, but motivated to get this done today. The final push. Oh, fly just landed literally on my lip as I was actually <laughs> was saying that. It's just the promise that this is the final day on the ring beam but we are absolutely flying this morning everything is popping and locking in all the right ways I think the dogs have got the right idea being in the shade. We're actually sat under one of our really big mature oak trees and we're really fortunate to have lots of mature ones on the property but sadly some of them have actually already started to drop their leaves. It's almost like autumn in certain areas because there are so many brown dry leaves everywhere. It's due to lack of water obviously we're in the height of a really hot summer and unfortunately it's just like a survival mechanism as I understand it for the trees but if it happens year by year it's actually not great for the health of the tree hopefully the big tree that we're sat under now manages to keep hold of its leaves just until the rain comes in maybe six to eight weeks time nice to be out of the sun for a bit mm. yeah unfortunately up on that scaffold you just can't get away from it you're so exposed but one good thing is we somehow seem to be getting through it much quicker today which is good and we're nearly done. We've just got the top of one slope to do and then we'll join the two slopes with the piece in the middle. So maybe another five mixes, something like that. One thing that I didn't explain at the start of this video or before was that the top of the gable where it's flat on this side with the little window below it. Not sure how this happened because we measured multiple times with a laser level to try and make sure that the two peaks were going to be the same height once we poured the ring beam just so the ridge beam would be able to sit flat between the two and level and luckily we decided just to have one last little check before we started pouring this last round of concrete and i'm really glad we did because somehow this one side of the gable has ended up five centimeters higher than the other side no idea how it's literally dead on five centimeters the wood on the form is exactly the same size either side so i'm not sure what's changed but we ended up having to redo the rebar cage that goes over so we reduced that by five centimeters as well and then i've just whizzed around now and put some battens on the inside of it five centimeters down so instead of coming up with the concrete flush to the top of the form it'll bring us five centimeters lower but yeah i'm very glad that we decided to be extra cautious and to measure that third time. You ready for the final push? I've only got one more push left in me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it feels pretty monumental to be getting to this point of getting this ring beam finished. Agreed? It does. We've done so much work to get it to this stage. So yeah, it is the final push. Yeah, it feels like we've been working towards this for a long time. I need like an 80s like montage or something <laughs> building up to finishing this.
We're done. That was an absolute mammoth effort. I want to clean this trowel, put it away in a box, and not have to look at it for a long time. We kept a tally of how many mixes it took to make this ring beam, and the grand total was 78. Bucketing it all up as well. It's yeah, uh, by hand. Been a good workout. And we calculated the amount of gravel and sand that we would need to almost perfection. Mm. We have literally used every bit of gravel. We've got a tiny bit of sand left over. We ordered loads of extra cement, so we'll put some of that away for storage for use on another project. I just hope when the form comes off, it looks okay. Yeah, me too. We've got a few more weeks to wait though until we get to see the big reveal.